Okay, so I am getting a little late here, but let's try to get one more in. So B31 is coming out. It's at the airport. Let me see if I can just set the camera down. Next one is the suffer too stress nonsense. So everybody needs to suffer too stress. And I'll look at, um, so Merrill has no problem taking too stress. Axel, on the other hand, five, six, seven, eight, nine stress. He'll place an asset. F12. So the asset not only comes out, but it removes one from the compromat board. So that was a double whammy. And uh, Mallory is up to 10 stress. That's not good. And that was uh, who? That was him. So now we're to uh, Merrill. Each cop must discard a lead they control or they are blackmailed. So Mallory has to draw another card. Uh, she's blackmailed again. So everybody's being blackmailed twice and then she's getting L1. So she now has a third one. Yeah, we're gonna lose. Okay, so now we get to Wilson Fox. He's blackmailed, so he's drawing. P13. And he's blackmailed again. So he has to draw another one. A5. All right, and then Meryl Jones uh, does not have any influence, so she has to draw for her blackmail. And right there it is. Suffer two stress or place an asset. It's game over. Look, I can place assets, <clears throat> and I can even take a turn and try to remove a few of them, but if there's three assets on the board, the boss is coming out, and I cannot destroy him in one turn. I just can't. He, I need to do 16 hits on him. So, um, uh, Selena can, well, let's just play this out. Selena takes two, so one, two, three, four, five. She's up to seven. Uh, this one can take two. Up to 11. Axel can actually take two, so uh, Mallory would have to draw an asset. So that would put the third asset on the board, which would lose the game for us. So B26 comes out. And uh, another one of these comes off the compromat. Okay, but we're not done. Meryl Jones got blackmailed once. We went through the entire deck. Now I have to shuffle all those nasty events again and keep drawing. Because everybody's being blackmailed twice. And so... Here's the next one. And there it is. Suffer two stress or assets come out. Game over. So... All right, my analysis. I was doing the right things. The, um, it feels like you need a character that can, these clues are really difficult. 4P is hard. That's 16 successes when you're only rolling two dice. So um, there's a part of me that you know, you need one of those guys who can roll eight dice. And uh, unfortunately, they don't exist. This Merrill Jones was able to get a lot of hunches. I did appreciate that. Um, she was able to roll some extra dice when needed. Selena was good. 
at what she did. I'm not sure she was the best. Uh, I can always get rid of the Delta Keys part, right? So if I get rid of that nonsense with the um, cargo, then I can keep all four characters on the board to focus them on activities on the board. Uh, I do think that would help. I mean, I know that those cards, when I destroy those cards, they give me a bonus. And those bonuses have been nice. I just don't know if they're nice enough to overcome the lost activity that I would be doing otherwise. Because um, these clues require a lot of hits. And that's one less person hitting clues, right? Because they have to spend their whole uh, life taking out the keys. Now, they granted, she was able to use extra cards to also try to take out crimes. And until recently, with, all, with the exception of all these blackmails, um, we were actually doing a real good job of keeping the crimes at bay. Um, I don't know of a character other than Rice Murdoch that actually has the ability to roll a lot of dice. So I think this is just a, you just got to keep pecking away. Um, the Leslie Nielsen lets you heal one stress every time he does an attack. So it's just one heal. I mean, it's not, it's not like uh, it's miracle work there. It's possible that Ying Hua Wang or Ricky Liu might have some serious damage in their decks. Uh, Gabe Fulton actually had a lot of ability to get extra dice. Um, I honestly believe that this was very winnable. It's just that I got unlucky with a few draws. And some of it is because um, this criminal deck, when you're drawing four cards at a time, you get hit with those events. I actually think this might be easier with less players um, because then you're not drawing these events so quickly. Um, drawing four of these, I mean, look, this deck is not very big. That's the entire deck, folks. Um, obviously, whenever I bust criminals, they go back into the discard pile, but um, yeah, I mean, it's not very thick, and when you're drawing four at a time, then there's a lot of events, and these events just punch you in the mouth. They're, they don't punch you in the mouth. They punch you where... Uh, it's not allowed in most fights. Um, I think it's just a tough combo. You know, the Anatoly Volkov events are what's getting us, right? The fact that we have to do these clues isn't what's killing us. It's that criminal deck is getting us. Um, it's a very interesting game, and this is a... You know, I give them credit that they amped up the difficulty with this one compared to some of the other ones. Um, <clears throat> so I wanted to, uh, since I'm only eight minutes in, I don't want to end the video just yet. Just give me a second. And by the way, the Delta Keys expansion it, like I said, it adds an extra layer of complexity. I think I have not proven that I'm proficiently good enough at this game to add that extra layer yet. Like, I think I was mitigating it uh, just fine, but if I didn't have it, I think I would have had an easier game, and I probably need that. And you know what else I should consider? I should consider giving myself some allies. That's something else I could do. I should not consider rivals <laughs> or the uh, syndicate. Okay, so here's what I wanted to show you. From a bad guy perspective, we have one, two, three, four more suspects that we could play. Um, <clears throat> it's my understanding that in the base game, he was one and so was him. Those are the two base game. And then this one's Keys to the Kingdom. And this one is, I think, the six, whatever the sixth thing is. Um, sixth cycle. I think this one's from the sixth cycle. Okay. So then, um, as far as cases go, the slain diplomat 
is a base game. So I'll put that over there. The, um, we've already seen the other two. One was where the girl got kidnapped and, uh, or maybe we didn't. Yeah, I think that is. So the one with the girl got kidnapped and then the, um, Oh, we didn't see the other two. So the other one, I think, is Shadow Theories, then. So let me put that there. Keys to the Kingdom is Keys to the Kingdom. So these two are Keys to the Kingdom. And then this Mercy deck, I think, came... Yes, it came with Vitruvian Man. Now, uh, I think... Uh, because we also had, like, some stretch goals, and there's like a, there was an extra packet of stuff... I think that's where Seaside 5 and Jumpstart comes from. So these were just extra things. Okay? So I did not read them all, but I can tell you that I know this one. Uh, what he does is he drives in a, a vehicle. So he actually drives around town visiting his assets. So assets go out just like those little suitcases there. And he drives around, and he has he actually has an AI. Um, so here's his vehicle. He actually has a vehicle that is either running or it's uh, impounded. Um, so uh, uh, we have to remove cooking the books from the criminal deck, okay? And then um, he starts near the bistro, and an asset token gets placed, okay? So cooking the books... And of course, he's got, I think he's got the coolest gangsters. Uh, where's Cooking the Books? Here we go. And then Cooking the Books. Each time Gus collects any number of influence, place that influence on this card. Uh, he has not gained it yet. So it goes on this card, and then he has to go collect it. If Gus is near an asset, move it to a random location. I mean, the asset moves again. So you just draw another card. And then Gus collects two influence. If Gus is near a crime, he collects each influence on that crime. And um, so he's running around collecting influence and it goes here on the books. And um, if there's ever 10 influence on this card, you lose. So when driving, Gus moves through block streets but may not stop in block streets. So each asset token is an errand and each crime is an errand. He moves three towards the errand nearest him. If Gus is not near an errand, he gains each influence on cooking the books. So, um, as long as he's not near one, he starts all those uh, influence that was on here, he gets it. So it doesn't take much. Um, so the thing with him is you want to like, you want to like impound him and flip the card to the impounded side. Each cup near Gus must suffer a stress if they're near him and all this other stuff. So Gus moves around and does all kinds of cool stuff. So um, uh, Mickey... Uh, so I didn't even read this one. So he's got groupies. He's like a... He's got groupies that fight for him. So a bunch of crazy chicks. It says, put leaked singles. I don't see a leaked singles. It says, remove leaked singles from the criminal deck, put it in the criminal play area. Oh, there it is. So obviously, um, lots of rules with it. But uh, these are a uh, base game. And then Keys of the Kingdom has, uh, so age long, starts at the Capitol Hotel. And cannot have more than five assets on his suspect card each time. Each cop suffers a stress. If there's ever seven influence on this card, the cops lose. Roll one die for each asset. For each critical, he gains an influence, then discards uh, 1p assets from his card. So um, that's pretty interesting. 
So uh, yes, that is high stakes because there's a lot of luck in that. <laughs> and um, and so yes, he's got some wandering things. Okay, so this, like I said, is from Keys to the Kingdom, right? But this is the one I wanted to show you. Mercy. So Mercy starts in the Relic Woods. Remove each asset card in the Darkest Hour card from the criminal deck and create what's called a ritual deck, following the rules on the back of that card. So um, there's this thing called the ritual deck. And there's ritual killing. So she's basically a serial killer that goes around and does, like, these sacrifices. And, um, and every time one of these comes out, the cops are going to be suffering stress and other bad things. Um, and then, of course, uh, there's abducted victims uh, that are assets. And so we need to obviously rescue them before they get sacrificed. And... Um, and so, yeah, she's doing this ritual. I guess she's doing witchcraft or satanic type stuff. And um, anyways, she's got her own separate Darkest Hour deck um, that's separate from her normal. And I, I just love the criminals with the pig faces. It reminds me of, like, Texas Chainsaw Massacre or something. Um, so, yes, there's, um, like, I think this one is really cool. I think it, it's probably very tough to play, but I think, um, I, well, I give them credit because I think they really, uh, the thing I'm enjoying about this game is they didn't just, oh, here's another deck and I tweak things. So you guys know I like to play Dan Versen games, but I'm going to trash Dan Versen games for just one second. And uh, that's with you knowing that I love Dan Versen games, but... I bought uh, Warfighter, and yes, I've never showed you guys Warfighter, and I may not. Uh, that game's quite intense, but um, uh, it takes a long time to play. Uh, anyways, uh, so I have the Warfighter uh, Modern, and I also have the Warfighter um, World War II. I did not get the Pacific, so, and it's largely because Warfighter is... If you want to buy everything, it's like $200. So that means I have $400 worth of Warfighter, which was a lot of money that I would probably wish I had back, although I like the modern one. Um, the, uh, the reason I stopped is I just don't play it enough. And I mean, you see me play Hornet Leader and all this other stuff, but I don't play that enough. It's just not worth the money to, to you know. But here's the gripe. So you get like, um, so let's just pick on the World War II one you get uh, a German deck, right? So you're fighting against Germans and you're, you know, you got an American deck because you're the Americans. Well, then they uh, let you buy a British deck and uh, actually an American deck. So you can be uh, Germans now fighting against the Americans, right? You can, and then there's even a Polish deck and then there's a Russian deck. And the point I'm getting to with all this is every, you have like all this stuff and all these decks, and, and it just looks like an amazing amount of content. But at the end of the day, the Soldiers for One is just a tweaked variation of a Soldier for Another. I mean, you could just keep using your American deck, and it's almost identical to the ones that are in this Russian deck. I mean, there, every now and then, like, uh, you, like for example, in the modern one, I know, uh, I think Americans have the best sniper in the game. So if you want the best sniper in the game, you got to pick an American. And I can't remember. I think the the British has a really good shotgun guy. I, I can't remember. It's been a while. But the point is, is that there are a few exceptions. But for the most part, other than the fact that there's a different flag on their uniform, um, the decks are not... You're, you, there's nothing groundbreaking about being one versus the other other than you just want to, for role-playing purposes have a German uh, contingency or you want to be up against the Germans instead of being up against the Russians or, or whatever. And you can even make it Americans versus Russians. You can come up with all kinds of fantasy scenarios. And yeah, that's the power of all these decks. Uh, so why did I give that a long-winded explanation? They didn't do that here. These decks are drastically different from each other. 
And that's the thing that I'm appreciating about it. They're, I mean, the, the mercy killings and the way this one works is going to be completely different than Anatoly that we were just doing. Now, um, there are some similarities, like, you know, uh, the henchmen are getting influence on them, and then if they accumulate enough, then they, you know, give their influence to the boss. Um, but it is very, 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 very different. And the one thing I wanted to check is some of these do have clues in them. So, like, this is a... Um, so, for example, this has a clue, and sure enough, it has 4P on it. So, you do. You need 16 successes just to get these clues. Um, so, uh, cut near an inactive clue. Here, you just need to control all five clue tokens to win. Okay? Here, in this one, you have to not only control all five... You then have to defeat Anatoly to uh, put it on him. That's the, the part that makes this uh, rough. Um, and see this? Remove all clue cards from the deck and put each into play. So they're already out at the start of the game. You know all the clues. You just need to go get them, defeat them, and then um, collect all five clues, and then you win. Right? And then it doesn't matter what gangster you pick. As long as you get all five clues, you win. So Seaside 5, pretty straightforward. Uh, this one we're doing is a lot more complicated. you got to do a lot more attacks. Um, so this one, jump start. Each player takes a clue and puts it into play in their crime area. Okay, so see, this is what's really cool, right? It's already different. Um, when a clue card is drawn, a cop must put it into their crime area. Vehicles attached to clue cards can move through blocked streets. After a cop busts a clue, the cop gains control of the token. If the cops control all five clues, they win. But the cool thing here is that a clue is actually one of the things you need to bust. So it's going to be in your uh, crime area. Uh, so they would have one of these in their crime area that they need to uh, deal with. And you can see here that there's vehicles attached and it's actually going to move. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. So when it activates in your crime area, it's actually gonna do something. So see, that's the thing. They just took something that we already have seen before and they added vehicles to it and now uh, all of your clues are actually moving around in cars and you gotta go and arrest them as they're moving around town. Um, how is that not awesome, right? You know, uh, this has clues that you need all five to win. So does this one. And you can already sense there's, even though it's a similar concept, they gave it just enough twist that this is a different way to play. So, and, and then, you know, you already know. So with this Mercy one, the Vitruvian Man comes with it. And this one is interesting because there's an A or a B story. So if you choose A, you remove all the B cards from the game. So you can play this case and do story A, and then you can play this case again and do story B, and it's two different stories. So I thought that was really cool, too. And obviously there's clue tokens in this, but what you're removing is the A or B. And, um, oh, I figured this out before. Yeah, here it is. See, that's got a B on it, So and that has an A on it. So you remove the A's, you remove the B's, and uh, this deck will be a lot slimmer. Uh, but see, so you can see here, this is a, you know, an event. Here's your case solved event for A. And um, each time a cop successfully encounters a suspect, they may discard one stress and gain a hunch. Each cop may control an additional lead. If case solved is drawn, the cops win. So all you have to do is just draw a case solved. Um, and then what you do is you organize the case desk so the cards are face down in a numerical order with 20 at the bottom and card one at the top. So this one is you have to just survive the game long enough to get to the bottom card, right? Every time you do a round, you're going to draw one and only one card from the deck. And, and it's, it's a progression story. And there's an A and a B. So um, now this is amazingly different from the other two. And that's... um. That's what excites me about this game. I think it's very cool. And from everything I've heard so far, that's what Street Masters does as well. Um, so 
uh, I'm call me interested. So I'm, I'm sure these guys are going to do another Kickstarter and they'll have some kind of bonus goal to do it. And I'll try to make sure I can get in on that and um, see if I can pick that up. It's going to be an expensive pickup, but uh, anyways. And Keys to the Kingdom. See, all the clue cards are going to be removed. Each cup chooses and takes control of a clue. Set the rest out of play in an evidence pool. And then um, you may only encounter the clue cards you control. They're not placed on the board. Um, you may discard 1P hunches to flip it to its inactive side. If it's activated, flip its token. So if you can get all five of them inactive, you win. But, uh, so, but still, they even put another twist on this, right? So everybody gets one that you control. Um, anyways, we can go on and on. Uh, shadow theories and slain diplomats. Um, but you can see, even with all this that we've done, there's still a lot more left to go. All right, so what are my thoughts? Um, I have this game called Gentes that arrived. I still haven't opened it. Um, it says on the box it's solitaire. So uh, some games say they're solitaire and then they suck. Um, I don't know if that's going to be one of them or not, but... Um, I have that. I have this game called Donning the Purple, which I know I've seen people do videos of. Uh, I read the rules and uh, I was like, okay, I might play it. Um, right now, it's one of those games that I own that I've never played. And I've been trying to get people to play it with me multiplayer and they just won't do it. So it's one of those games that's frustrating me because I wish I didn't pick it up. Um, I didn't think it was that bad of a game. Uh, so I may have to play it solitaire. I just don't know if it's a great solitaire game. I still have Lord of the Rings underneath this one. So I might get that out and try it again. I do think I didn't give it a, a fair shake. Um, I actually have this game. Too Many Bones. I mean, we just played it last weekend. Uh, multiplayer. Um, I haven't tried to do a video series on this. Uh, largely because there's so much ambiguity in the way the card text reads that uh, I don't mind you guys uh, trying to correct things that I do wrong, but sometimes I just don't have the stomach for the amount of comments I'm going to get <laughs> whenever I'm trying to interpret cards that are ambiguous in the first place. Um, and no offense, I, I, I love it all. Um, unless you're rude, then I don't love it. But... Um, uh, but yes, thank you, um, for all your help and support and all these, I mean, even like the Lord of the Rings, somebody taught me that, uh, before you start a mission, you actually get to count those cards that you start with as prepared, meaning you get to do the effect of preparing it. And I didn't know that. So that was a big mistake that actually would have helped us a lot. Um, I still have the Centauri Saga, <clears throat> uh, legacy campaign. To do. I've been uh, leaning towards not doing it because I thought it would maybe spoil the legacy campaign for people. But after watching uh, Avengers and dealing with people going absolutely guano crazy, uh, I just, uh, you know, about, you know, spoiling the movie and who dies in the end or anything like that. Um, I'm really annoyed by uh, the people who do that. And so there's a part of me that just wants to spoil the crap out of everything and just tell everybody, you know what, Optimus Prime dies in uh, in the 1980s Transformers movie, in case you haven't seen it yet. Um, and uh, uh, I can't remember her name, Kristen or Kirsten. She's the one that shot JR, just in case you were wondering, and, you know, still had it on DVR. Um, you know, so uh, sorry if I ruined it for you. Uh, it was his, uh, the lady he was having the affair with. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so anyways, there you go. Um, so yeah, I don't know what, what's going to come next. Uh, I do have a couple of days of activities with the kids, so I might be gone for a little bit. Um, but, uh, I'm really enjoying this, uh, a lot. I think doing four players... Four characters makes the videos take so much longer. 
So I might go back down to Solitaire. Solitaire worked fine the time we did it. It's just that I, 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 I'll be confessed with you. I really wanted to try all the characters. So what better way to do it than just let's play four of them, right? Um, okay, I, like I said, that adds complexity. It's not very fun. That's my uh, answer to you. The Delta Keys is not a very fun addition. Um, it doesn't, you know, make me say, oh, wow, let's, we got to have Delta Keys or otherwise it's not a complete game. I can take it or leave it. Uh, there's a part of me that thinks that maybe next time we should just ignore the cargo and just let it, let it build up and do whatever the heck it wants to us. Um, I don't know. Uh, it's just a, I, I, I want to add things if they make the game fun. That one, I think what it does is it gives you more challenge. So if you're finding this game to be too easy, you need to add Delta Keys. And in my case, I haven't like solved the puzzle yet, so it's not appropriate for me to add it yet. That's, that's where I'm at. Okay, so um, I still want to try Morgan Hall. I still want to try Earl Thompson. But I mean, there's one, two, three, four, there's five characters we still haven't done. Uh, if you add more uh, banks to it, so um, hmm. oh, we'll figure something out. Um, I'm liking these characters we just played, like a lot. I really like some of these characters. Um, in fact, all four of these are. If you came over to my house and told me I had to be one of these four, I would have a hard time picking which one. So uh, that's how much I like them. Uh, the Leslie Nielsen, like I said, was good, and that Chance Mitchell was still, um, it surprised me how good it was, and so was Axel Murdoch. Um, anyways, I'm going to shut up. I'm now at 31 minutes, so uh, thank you for watching. Stay awesome, and you might see another one of these. Um, you might see some Lord of the Rings. We'll figure it out. Uh, see ya.